大家好，欢迎来到 Blue Rider 二台北敦人。这一档呢，我们要介绍的是呃，艺术家 Rupert von Kaufman。这一次在台北敦人，也是在台湾的首个展——潜意识独白 （Monologue）。呃，跟我在线上的呢，就是艺术家本人。那我们现在来跟艺术家来面谈一下。Hello, good morning, Rupert. Hi, good morning. Nice to see you. So early. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. And、uh, yeah, we have a few questions for you. And first one on my hands, I have two books, which、uh, indicate the artworks from、uh, 2007 until recently. It、uh, covers like 15 years of your artist career, and would you like to tell us a little bit about the difference between the two books and the two stages of your art career? Yes. So the first book,、um, the earlier book, has primarily still paintings on canvas in it, and it also has. A lot of the paintings from period when I was working a lot with creating the illusion of black and white paintings through using complementary colors against each other. So a lot of the paintings in the first book seem kind of gray, black and whitish,、um, and only if you look closer you can see that they're actually full color, but the color is very reduced.、Um, in the second book. You instantly notice that there's a lot more color in the paintings, and the second very major change is that from the previous book to this book, I've started using、um, linoleum as a painting ground, and that has changed my approach to painting and how I paint quite a lot. And linoleum has allowed me to introduce a lot of elements that. I've been searching for in the previous work already, but couldn't quite get to work.、Um, those finally happened on the linoleum. Part of the reason is because the linoleum, as a painting ground,、um, allows me to carve into it. It's very、um, beautiful, interesting, lush surface that、um, also. Um, invited me to leave some of the parts of the painting in a drawing stage, and it also allows to collage into the painting. So I've started using stencils that I use for painting the paintings, also to collage them onto the panels themselves. And it seems to me the、uh, there are some special colors you use. Uh, all the way through the、uh, recent years in your paintings, could you talk about、uh, the colors in your paintings? Yes.、Yeah, so, my,、uh, what most people, what strikes most people almost instantly is that the color palette is、um, rather on the cold spectrum, and that I use a lot of. Purples and blues in my paintings, and one of my favorite pigments is actually Prussian blue, which is a very intense,、um, extreme blue. The reason for that is that、um, I felt that the paintings have a much more dreamlike quality with that color palette, and they feel a little bit more removed into an, into an artificial world, apart from ours.、Um, the other reason was that. Before that, I was my painting comes from a very、um, old master-based approach, where color palette is very warm generally、um, because it tries to emulate sort of candlelight, and I wanted to move it more to a very the kind of、um, coldness that modern neon light has, rather than those old-fashioned candlelight situations. And、uh, we saw some portraits of your painting, but、uh, most of the portraits you you blur the faces. Can you tell us why and what does it mean for? Absolutely.、Um, 
the most important reason I think why the, the faces are blurred in the paintings is because I don't want them to be portraits um, of people. I want them to be the persons or the people in my paintings to be kind of archetypes for a certain type of person. And when the face is recognizable, becomes a painting about a particular individual. But I don't want them to be paintings about individuals. I want them to be paintings about people in general, persons in general. And I want the viewer to be able to fill in those blanks and um, have the ability to um, make the painting his or her own, depending on her own background, own memories, own experiences, life experiences that you carry into the paintings. And in uh, figurative painting, uh, could you tell us what do you, how do you see the difference between your portrait painting and Francis Bacon's? I think there's there's a um, there's a huge huge difference in them. Um, obviously, there I, there is inspiration by Francis Bacon. Um, I think he's a fantastic, wonderful artist. Um, but I feel that they're very different, especially the portraits, because generally, like in the portraits, most of the time they stay more realistic than Francis Bacon's paintings do, and the people that I'm painting, um, actually, also other than Francis Bacon, who, who based his paintings on photographs, I don't use any references at all. So I don't use models or I don't use photos. Um, the figures, scenes, everything in the paintings is completely comes from invention. And especially in the portraits, I'm more looking for um, to represent the feeling that I got from a person that I've encountered rather than an actual likeness in, in that sense, um, which might then be actually more of an overlap with Francis Bacon, who I think was also more going for the feeling in the end, even though he started from a photograph than for likeness. And um, after looking at the two books and uh, we can use some words or terms to describe the style of your painting language, like uh, surreal, blur, uh, grayish, or very philosophical and very uh, dramatic or, yeah. But how do you see your language? What words will you describe? What term? Well, I mean, um, I think emotional hits it very much to the core. Um, I'm, I'm very much trying to create emotions in the paintings because emotion allows to create a very um, direct connection with the viewer. I want a very quick, empathetic, connection with the viewer that pulls the viewer in before they have time to really reflect. We want it to be an approach that's first intellectual and then maybe something else. I want my paintings to be first emotional and then comes the intellectual engagement second and the questioning of my intuitive reaction second. And I think the, the red thread that all the paintings have in common is that I'm very interested in, in human beings. I'm, I'm fascinated by human beings and I try to um, explore in my paintings why people can be so contradictory, right? People, humans are capable of being incredibly kind, incredibly loving, incredibly inventive. At the same time, they're capable of extreme cruelty, extreme recklessness, extreme um, ignorance. And I find this wide, wide spectrum of predictability in humans extremely fascinating. And that's something that draws me in again to human figures and exploring them in my paintings. 
So uh, you mentioned when you started a painting, it's like directing a movie. So every movie has a story. And where did you get the story from? Where, what inspires you for the stories? So this, the, the big difference to, to um, an actual film, obviously, in the paintings is that there's no clear story with a beginning, middle, and an end. Um, they're open stories, or they're, they're just um, teasers for a story. The story then happens, hopefully, in the head of the viewer when they encounter the painting. The ideas or concepts from for the paintings come from a lot of different places, um, but primarily really from literature, from reading, and from music, and especially the lyrics to music. And it's, it's never like a direct interpretation of a certain text, but it's more that certain words or phrases get stuck in my head and they, they trigger imagery. And I try to do the reverse process that they create imagery that then might trigger words in the viewer's head. It's sort of like taking a, a pebble and throwing it into a pond and watching how the rings kind of start spreading. And the last question is, uh, uh, you mentioned you are very interested in human re uh, emotions or relationships with nature or animals or uh, inter uh, actions and um, is uh, what's the uh, core concept of the message you try to deliver through all your paintings? As I mentioned, uh, the core concept is my interest in who are we as human beings. That's sort of like the um, the main question that concerns me and how do we interact with each other and how do we interact with the environment and animals for example are just a means of transporting that because in i believe in most cultures we've got from early childhood on we're used to hearing stories where animals kind of represent certain human archetypes right like, fables where the fox is the smart one or you know um, a turtle is slow um, that kind of um, thing where animals are connected to certain archetypes and I try to use them in that way in my paintings but it's always kind of to kind of um, investigate who are as human beings and to try and um, find not an answer, it's, it's just an open investigation. Uh, I think your, uh, the show will uh, bring us uh, a very wonderful uh, adventure um, into this uh, very uh, dynamic imaginations of your art. So uh, thank you for the interview and we hope to see you very soon in the near future and yeah. wish us success <laughs> thank you and um thank you very much for having me right I'm, I'm very happy and proud to to be at the gallery or you know at least my work is at the gallery and um, i think it looks really beautiful in the space and i wish i could see it in person but um yeah maybe the next time yes yes thank you bye thank you bye yeah.